Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my channel. So basically uh, in this playlist, uh, I'm going to add a number of videos related to Noma. At the same time, I will add one more playlist for Noma simulation in MATLAB. So here in this video particularly, uh, I'm going to explain a very simple case of two user Noma. So uh, we have totally two kinds of uh, multiple access technique, uh, orthogonal and non-orthogonal. The example of orthogonal multiple access technique are FDMA, CDMA, TDMA. So I will take a very simple example of FDMA and try to explain you what is the concept and from how NOMA is evolved. For example, uh, we have 20 megahertz bandwidth and we have 5 users. Now this entire 20 megahertz bandwidth need to be set among these 5 users in such a way that there will be no interference. So the simplest way is to uh, make equal part of 4 megahertz out of this 20 megahertz and give each user one part. So user 1 is giving one part, user 2 is giving another part, similarly user 3, user 4, user 5. So the frequency part used by user 1 will not interfere to other part used by other users. So there is a kind of orthogonality in frequency domain. Take one more example. Suppose we have only 4 megahertz bandwidth. And we have five users, but here we have two conditions. All the five users need this entire four megahertz bandwidth to send their signal. Second condition is they need to be sharp at the same time. So this entire four megahertz bandwidth need to be given to all the five users at the same time. This is cannot possible uh, by using any uh, orthogonal multiple access technique. That is why NOMA comes into picture. So, using non orthogonal multiple access technique, we can give this entire 4 megahertz bandwidth to each user at the same time. So, I will explain you how this thing can be done. There are many advantages of using NOMA in terms of spectral efficiency. You know, spectral efficiency is nothing but bit rate upon bandwidth. So, here in this diagram, you can see that within this part of the frequency spectrum, we are serving user 1 and user 2. So we are sending more number of data as we are accommodating two users here. So spectral efficiency will increase. Uh, massive connectivity, uh, this is only because uh, we are accommodating more number of users in same time frequency resource. We, here we can also use user 3, user 4, similarly. Latency is less, uh, this is only because uh, all the users are being served simultaneously in the same type user resource. They don't have to wait for their resources. But this is not the case with uh, orthogonal multiple access technique. For example, uh, in uh, PDM, what will happen is that uh, each user will be given one time slot. So outside the time slot, it has to wait. So latency is a problem. But uh, here in NOMA, the latency is very less. Users' fairness is maintained uh, because, irrespective of their channel condition, all the users are being served simultaneously. But this we cannot see in orthogonal multiple access technique. For example, in wave uh, those users who will have good channel condition, there is a high variety that they will be served first. But the users who will have uh, less uh, bad channel condition, poor channel condition, have to wait. Now, uh, NOMA can be broadly divided into two parts Power Domain NOMA and Code Domain NOMA. Here I have explained about uh, Power Domain NOMA. So, this NOMA concept is totally based on uh, superposition coding at the transmitter end and SIC at the receiver end. I will make one more video to explain the SIC in great details. Okay. But here I have explained in short about the hot SIC. So in this diagram, you can see we have two users, user 1 and user 2. User 1 is a strong user because it is a closer to the base station and user 2 is a weak user because it is a further side from the base station. User 1 has channel copies in H1 and user 2 will have channel copies in H2. Now, this magnitude H1 square will be greater than magnitude H2 square. This is only because user 1 is a strong user because it is closer to the base station. Okay. Now, we want to serve this both the two users in this same time frequency resource. So in the same frequency, we want to serve these two users at the same time. 
So what we will do is that we will assign different power for the two users. User 2 is here the weak user. So we will give him higher power and we will give user 1 lower power. So this power allocation is the main factor for implementing the SIC. I will explain you how. So at the transmitter end, it will generate only one signal P. T is the superimposed signal of user 1 and user 2 and this P will be transmitted from base station. So this same signal will be received at user 1 end and user 2 end. Now I will show you how we will generate this T using superposition coding. So suppose x1 is the symbol generated for user 1 and x2 is the symbol generated for user 2 and p is my total power. So I need to divide this total power p uh, between these two users, user 1 and user 2 such that user 2 get higher power and user 1 get lower power. So we will assign power coefficient alpha 1 for user 1 and alpha 2 for user 2 such that alpha 1 plus alpha 2 sums equal to 1, right? So, what is T my? T is nothing but, so x1 is my modulated symbol for user 1 and x2 is the modulated symbol for user 2. So, x1 will be multiplied with this power. So, alpha 1 into T plus x2 is the symbol for user 2, it will be multiplied with this power, which is alpha 2 into P. And this is my generated superimposed signal. It will be sent from the base station and the same signal will be received both user 1 and user 2 end. So you can see this T is being generated and it will be sent from the base station and the same signal will be received to both the user 1 and user 2 end. We can also write T in such a way that it is nothing but summation of i is equal to 1 to 2. root alpha i into p into xi. So this is my t, transmitted signal. This is xi. Now, uh, you know that uh, the receive signal in any wireless medium it will look like that signal will be multiplied with the channel coefficient plus noise. So y1 is the receive signal at user 1 end and y2 is the receive signal at user 2 end. Now I will show you how from y1 and y2 they will get their original signal back. So y1 is nothing but p e into h1 plus n1 so t is nothing but x1 into alpha 1 into p plus x2 into root alpha 2 into p into h1 plus n1 now if i write one more step alpha 1 into p, x2 into root alpha 2 into p, this is h1, this is my signal part, this is noid plus, uh, interference part, this is noid part. So this is my signal part, this is my interference part, and this is my noise part. Now, uh, this interference is coming from the user 2. Now, this signal part has lesser power than this interference part. So y1 at first need to eliminate this interference effect from the user 2. Then only it can detect the original signal. That is why it will implement the SIC. So for SIC at first it will eliminate the channel effect by channel equalizing. So it will get x1 into root alpha 1 into p plus x2 into root alpha 2 into p plus n1. Now, this part which is the interference part 
has higher power so if this signal is directly demodulated then we will get the demodulated part of x2 suppose this is x2 bar so after demodulation it will do again modulation of this signal so it will get x2 then it will be multiplied with root alpha 2 into p so we will get x2 into root alpha 2 into p after that this uh, this part will be subtracted from this part so what we will get so x1 into root alpha 1 into p plus x2 into root alpha 2 into p plus n1 it should be n1 test because after uh, divided with h1 it should be n1 test minus this part x2 into root alpha 2 into p so this part will be enumerated and we will get x1 into root alpha 1 into p plus n1 dash now this is my signal part this is my noise part so now when user 1 will do direct demodulation of this part it will get this demodulated version of x1 its original signal right so what we are do, uh, what we have done here is that at first it uh, detects its signal part how it will detect its signal part it will do the sic so by using the sic it can eliminate the interference coming from the user 2 right now at y2 user 2n what will do is that user 2 will reset y2 so y2 is nothing but t into s2 plus n2 now what is my uh, t t is x1 into root uh, alpha 1 into p plus x2 into root alpha 2 into p be multiplied to s2 plus n2 now for user 2 this is my interference part this is my the signal part and this is my noise uh, but here the interference has less power than this signal power signal power signal has a more power than this interference part so y2 cannot eliminate this interference effect coming from the user 1 okay so user 2 what will do user 2 will directly demodulate this center signal and it will get its original signal back but it cannot eliminate the interference coming from the user 1 so uh, in this diagram you can see that user 1 can eliminate the interference coming from the user 2 by using the SIC which I have shown you and it will dictate its original signal but user 2 it will directly demodulate its original directly demodulate the signal coming from the base station as it cannot eliminate the interference coming from the user 1 because it will has it has user 1 has a lower power right now uh, this is this is how both the users will detect their original signal now uh, I will show you how SI inner is calculated based on y1 and y2 right so for user 1 for user 1 y1 receive signal uh, is nothing but uh, x1 multiplied with alpha 1 into p h1 plus x2 multiplied with alpha 2 into p h1 plus n1 now using sic uh, we can eliminate the interference effect right the interference part we can eliminate so actual sinr for user 1 is nothing but signal power divided by interference plus noise power so what is the signal power here it is alpha 1 into p into magnitude of h1 square this noise pass is eliminated so the noise power is zero but the uh, uh, sorry interference power is zero here because using the sic we can eliminate this part so we will have only the noise power suppose sigma square is a noise power so this is my sinr for y1 and for user 1 for user 2 y2 is uh, x1 into root alpha 1 into p into h2 plus 
x2 into root alpha 2 into p into h2 plus n2. Now here, this is my signal part. This is uh, for y2, this is my uh, interference part. This is my signal part. And this is my noise part. So SINR for z2 will be power of the signal part is nothing but alpha 2 into p into magnitude h2 square divided by power of this interference part, which is alpha 1 into p into magnitude h2 square plus power of the noise suppose noise power is sigma square so this is sinr for the user 2 you can see here the same thing i have calculated now this is rate it is rate is nothing but the log to 1 plus sinr similarly we can calculate the rate of user 2 this is the simulation result of uh, noma here i have taken power in dbm so with power i have calculated the beat rate for the two users so you can see here the user one which is strong user will have the lesser beer but the user two will have which is a weak user will have much higher beer this is because user two cannot cal cannot eliminate the interference coming from the user one you can see far user has more beer than near user as is suffered from interference from the near user that is why and here also you can see the power versus capacity plot for the two users now uh, in some uh, other playlist i will show you how to calculate or uh, simulate uh, these graphs in matlab again uh, for uh, future content i will also cover four users noma br performance for four user noma the how to do the power allocation and how this power allocation will play a critical role for the SIC calculation. Again, I will show you the SIC in details pictorially. There is a concept of cooperative NOMA. I will also cover that. Multi-input, uh, multi-output, multi multi-output multi multi NOMA I will also cover. Again, there are some problems to implement the NOMA. I will also cover in some other videos. One more thing I will also cover in this video. For four user NOMA, uh, just simply I will tell you, suppose, user 1 is here, user 2 is here, user 3 and user 4. So user 1 is the closest to the base station and user 4 is the farthest from the base station. I will show you how this power allocation is important, how this power allocation is important to calculate the SIC. Suppose alpha 1 is the power, power coefficient of user 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 and this for alpha 4. Now, as uh, user 1 is the strongest user so it will have it will have lower power coefficient right so alpha 1 is less than alpha 2 is less than alpha 3 is less than alpha 4 this is not the only condition we also satisfy one more condition what is that the condition is alpha 4 should be greater than alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 again alpha 3 should be greater than alpha 2 plus alpha 1 only when this condition are satisfied then only we can implement the sic so for the implementation of sic this condition is very important so when i will cover the four users nova i will explain you why this condition are needed right Thank you.